Hey, good morning, guys. Well, some of you are going to recognize this spot that I'm at. Right here behind me, this is the site where I filmed my first YouTube video for you guys. The reason I'm back here today is because inside of that episode was some false information. I was using an outdated source, and I want to make sure and let it be known now that I don't want there to ever be a question as to the integrity of this channel. Um, I'm not a professional, but I definitely don't like being wrong and I definitely don't like giving out wrong information. So for those of you that have been around since the beginning, I want to make sure and apologize. And for those of you that are just now joining, I hope that this is some uh, words that encourage you to follow along. But uh, with that being said, I'm going to redocument this site with some new and improved knowledge and hopefully some better footage. So. Uh, Let's go check out some pictographs. Alrighty guys, so I'm sure y'all are familiar with the term save the best for last. Well here at Huntstash we don't do that. This right here is my favorite painting at this site. This is the first one you come to working along this wall. So right here you've got this inverted cone and a dark black. And then going up from it you have another cone shape with what has been described as toes in the past, but I believe that some people interpret this as a bear paw or a foot of some sort. What you've actually got here is a volcano, and I find that just absolutely thought provoking. I, I think it's pretty awesome that this painting is here where it is, and we're still able to visit it to this day. So if we move just up and to the left from our possible volcano painting here, you'll see these horizontal zigzags. And these are worth noting for two reasons. One being, you'll see these quite a bit in this region. And two, I've been told that these can signify mountain chains, almost like it's telling a story. So you've got these two horizontal zigzags right here next to this volcano painting. And then just below the horizontal zigzags is a large piece that's broken off. I feel like at one point in time, this was telling a story. As you can see, now we're kind of tucked away inside of this large overhang or a rock shelter, if you will. And we've got these two paintings, one right here, just to my left, and then another about two feet over. And this one's a little bit larger. Both of them appear to be a quadruped of some sort. Alrighty, so one of the reasons that I think that last one is likely a deer or some form of a quadruped is because you've got these two paintings here this one here is a lot more faded and a little bit harder to identify. However, you can definitely make out a torso, two legs, two legs, and what appears to be antlers or a head coming forward. And then down here, we've got another quadruped, likely a deer with what appears to be antlers or ears, body coming down, and then its legs going off to the left. These ones right here, they take a little bit of effort to get to. I don't know if you can see them from all the way down there, but starting right here and over about four feet is all painted. I was thinking maybe we could walk along this ledge for a ways, see what we find. Walking all along this bluff here actually paid off. I don't know if you can see it, but right here behind me is a little bit of a pictograph that's still visible. It's it's hard to tell what it once was, but I'll get you a close up. One of the coolest things about these hands in particular is if you look right in between them, you'll make out the head of a deer. So you've got the neck, the snout, the antlers, and then you can see the body coming back off to the left.
So yet another neat feature about this site, right here behind me, we have an intact rock wall of which would have served as a barrier or some form of protection um, and extension to this rock shelter behind me. Pretty amazing. Alrighty, well we made it up on top of the mountain a little bit and wind's starting to pick up so I'm going to try and hurry and get through this but one thing I wanted to show you right here that's a very large mezcal pit of which I'm going to jokingly call the mid to late archaic school of culinary arts <laughs> so what you've got here is essentially a large oven which would have been used to cultivate and cook or roast the plant called mezcal one of the things that cracks me up about these though is how many names the locals give it. Uh, I've heard Soto Pit, I've heard Sotal Pit, I've heard Yucca Pit, Agave Pit, Mascal Pit, and then in surveys, they're often referred to as Ring Middens. Whatever it is that you want to call it, it's an old oven. And it's pretty neat that you can still find these littered throughout the mountains of southern New Mexico. Alrighty, well, it's starting to get a little bit too windy for me to do any filming, so I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day, but I really appreciate you guys coming along for the ride. I really hope you enjoyed the rock art and of course the mezcal pit, soto pit, gave pit, yucca pit, ring midden, whatever it is that you guys wanna call it. But uh, I had a pretty good time out here and I hope y'all follow along and subscribe, and as always, support history. <laughs>